Hi and welcome to Teach the Table. I'm Nathan and this is Isle of Sky. This is a tile laying game where each player is a chieftain leading a different clan trying to build out their territory by putting tiles on it with the ultimate goal to get points for meeting certain objectives which change during each game. Isle of Sky is played over five or six rounds depending on the number of players and at the end of each round one of these scoring tiles is going to get points to players who meet the objectives on it. So for example in round one just tile A is going to get points for people. In round three tiles A and tile C will get points and these tiles change throughout every game so there's a lot of variability in that regard. Each player has a player screen like this, and on the back are the six phases of each round, starting with the income phase. And that's where players get money based on their territory that they've built out. Starting out, you just have a single castle space, so that's going to get you five money to start off with. As you build out your territory in the future, you also get an additional money for each of these whiskey barrel icons that's connected back to your castle by roads. Also on rounds three and up, players will get additional money during the income phase for each player's scoring token that's in front of them. So the player in last place would get two additional money in round three in a three player game. The second phase where all players will draw three landscape tiles out of the bag and they're gonna set them up and get to assign the prices. So let's see how that works. Players will place those three landscape tiles in front of their player screen like so, and behind the screen they're going to secretly use their axe icon to choose one that they want to discard immediately, and then they're using their own money, they're going to assign a value to the other two tiles, and you can use up to all the money that you have, and this is the value that other people can pay for those tiles. However, if they don't buy the tiles from you, then you're going to buy them at that set price. So that kind of forces you to be a little bit fair. Once all players are finished, they're going to remove their screens to show the decisions that they've made. The tiles that they're going to discard are immediately discarded at this point, just back into the bag. Next, starting with the starting player and going clockwise, each person will have an opportunity to buy just one tile that's in front of one of their opponents for the value that they've set for it. You can only use money that you have left over. You can't use any of this money that you've assigned out here for values. So right now, I've only got one money. I can afford one of these. Let's say I'm going to buy this tile. So that player is going to get the money that I spend as well as the money they assign to it because now that tile's mine and it goes next to my screen. This continues until each player's had an opportunity to buy just one tile or or to pass. After that, any tiles that no one purchased from you, you're going to have to buy for the money that you've assigned to it. So put that money back in the bank, and you're going to take that tile in front of you as well. And that brings us to phase five, where we get to place those tiles that we just purchased onto our territory. The rules for placing tiles are that you place a tile to match an edge with your existing territory, and the types of terrain on there have to match. In this case, we've got water that matches up. Or I could place this tile like this because it matches up on that mountain there. It is legal to block a road like so. Just remember that blocking off a road will limit your options in the future because you can get additional income if you've got these barrels connected to the road. So in this case, that's going to be a better idea because I'll get an additional money during the income phase. If you have a tile that you can't place into your territory, it just goes into the bag and you don't get your money back. So try not to make that happen. The last phase of the round is just scoring based on the scoring tile that's being used in that round. So in this case, just tile A is going to get scored. So any players that meet any of those objectives on there will get a various number of points. And then we're going to move on to the next round by pushing that forward. The starting player token will move clockwise to the next player and we will do it all over again. There's a nifty scoring tile summary in the rule book, so when you're setting up the game as the scoring tiles come out, probably just read this to each player so that they know what the goals are going to be as the game goes on. At the end of the final round, after scoring the appropriate scoring tiles there, there is going to be a final scoring, and that's based on players' territories. If they have any of these little scroll icons, they're going to get additional points for meeting the objectives in there. In this case, it's one point for each of these little towers that that person has inside their territory. So you can score those appropriately. There's also this additional bonus. You can see this yellow border around that that indicates that if that scroll is inside of a completed type of terrain. So in this case, if this ocean or lake is completely done, we've done, got all the borders all the way around and it's finished, then it's going to be double that bonus. So you get two points for each of those towers. Additionally, if you have any leftover money, each five coins you have can be converted into one additional point. The player with the most points at the end of the game is the winner, of course. In the case of a tie, the person with the most money is the winner. And that's all you need to know to play Isle of Sky. Thanks for watching Teach the Table. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please subscribe to my channel, and I will see you next time. As always, don't forget to have fun.